Morning Modern Steaders. This morning, we're going to keep on our conversation with homesteading hurdles. A lot I've been hearing questions about, and you see it all over the place, is how do you get everybody on the same page or your spouse on the same page? I think that's a great question. We don't have all the answers. We're not always on the same page. I think it's progress. So I thought we'd have a real conversation. We haven't talked about it. Olivia said, Can I, what are you guys making a video on? I said, you know what? Perfect. Why don't you come on in? We'll do a whole, we'll do a whole family topic on how do you get everybody involved and that wants to be involved. So let's dive right in. How do you get your spouse or your family on the same page? I think the way we started was it was more of a health issue. That's how I found out about this kind of lifestyle. It's more of our food. And then I wanted to get into gardening. You were pregnant the first year with Olivia. Mm -hmm. So you weren't. It wasn't that you don't think you didn't want to, but you were more limited. Why well, wasn't You were busy building the, fixing the house up so we could have enough room for Olivia, and so it was kind of just, it wasn't, it wasn't the way we probably would have did it if we did it all together. No. But I think, from, from my point of view, you'll let me know what you think, is if somebody's not on board with homesteading, that doesn't mean you can't start doing it. Mm -hmm. like I think the best way to do it is if, whatever you want to start. Maybe you, you want to start with pigs. You might not be able to start right away with pigs. Mm -hmm. But if you want to start gardening, just start a garden. Whether your husband or your wife isn't into it. I don't think it's an issue if you start a garden or a small one or a big one. And then they're going to reap the benefits out of it. All the great food that you've grown. And I think if you just keep doing it little by little, you, they'll want to get involved. Mm -hmm. And Like why do you like doing it? What pot do you like? What pots do you don't the fresh. like? I like the fresh fruits and vegetables. You like making the bacon? Mm -hmm. You don't do you like, like to eat the stuff out of it? Yeah. Out of the garden? Oh, yeah. You don't like doing all the work for her sometimes? Right? Yeah. No, she doesn't like to pick up apples. She doesn't <laughs> like to pick up apples. She doesn't want to clean up animal poop, which is fine. I don't. We don't force Olivia, and I don't think you should, because the way I look at that is then they're not going to want to grow up doing it. If you can, I think you need to teach them that there's some responsibility, especially say like when Olivia wants rabbits or an animal, that, that's her responsibility. She needs to take care of it. But if it's something like the pigs or the chickens that she really doesn't care about, mm -hmm. I'm not going to force her to go do it because then she's never going to want to do it. Yeah, but I think you also have to kind of show the children the stuff. You, know, you do have to have have them try to help you some so that you have right. some kind of responsibility. No, but I just don't, I don't think you should force it on because in that way they're just going to grow up hating it. Right. Is my, I think that's why a lot of people got away from farming. Like their parents did it and they looked at it more of like a drudgery. Like, oh, they got to get up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. every morning and go do, go do this and go do that. And that's not fun. Right. You know? When you do a lot of things outside the box, so you kind of make all of us think, oh, wow, I didn't know we could do it that way. Um, I can be lazy sometimes. Might always be doing stuff, but I can be lazy too. Like I don't want to do something the hard way, so I'll try to think out of the box and find an easier way to do it. I think is what it comes down to. Because weeding's no fun. I mean, do you like to weed? <laughs> then that's fine. I don't enjoy weeding. I don't enjoy shoveling poop. So it's speaking for me if I can find ways to avoid doing that without without neglecting it. So it's not getting done. I'd rather do that. But yeah, so I think the garden for us was the first year. You weren't, we were, we were busy, but we wanted to do one anyways. We didn't get a lot to it. We but, had some family apps that we all kind of put in and it, it came out good. It just wasn't nice lines and just, right. it wasn't, it was a start. It was a start. It was a start. And, and I think, we didn't get everything. We, I mean, we got to use some of the stuff. And, you know, we didn't keep up on weeding because I was, um, she was born to lie, so um, that's yeah, you were most of our... You were pretty far along at that mm, point. Yeah, so there wasn't a lot of weeding done, but we did get some food out of the gardens and started from there, and then it made our soil stronger for the next year. Yeah, it wasn't perfect by no means the first year, but that's made us want to do it even more next year because we got a taste of, oh, we, I think that was the first year we made pickled beets. Your mom makes pickled beets, but mm -hmm. she doesn't make them um, like a like a spicy one. Not like not not like hot spicy, but we put 
What could we? We we pick one. We put more. What are we putting them clove or something like that? I forget the recipe. We put we have more of a flavoring to ours. It's not just her mom makes it with its pickles and vinegar. And to me, that's just kind of plain. So the first year we found a recipe and we made pickle beets our way. And we're like, wow, these are great. And I think that was the year we put cauliflower in with our bread and butter pickles. And we had the oh, no, that was the second year. Well, I was gonna say we didn't do that at all because we put a newborn baby. Yeah, so it must be the second year. The house, the house. But you, every year you do a little bit more. And we got chickens. We did chickens. Yep. We did the turkeys. I think you just start little, yeah. and it teases you because you have this food. Well, I also think because we moved away for a little bit. And where we were living, we couldn't do as much stuff as we had done. Or even right. just a little bit of time that we had no chickens at all. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. like, oh, wow. We don't have a place for our food scraps. And, you know, we don't want to just throw that stuff away. We felt, we felt wasteful. Mm -hmm. And so I think that opened our eyes to that. And then when we did have some animals, you know, it was more, we had to be very limited because I don't even know if we. We should have had animals. I don't think we were supposed to have animals where we were. We didn't ask. We just kind of did it. We didn't do pigs. We, I would have loved to raise pigs, but I think we really would have got trouble if we raised pigs. We had. We didn't do meat chickens there, but we had egg layers and we had meat rabbits there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when we first moved to Mass, we were in a ho hotel. We were in an apartment, so we didn't have anything. And that, I remember that was your biggest thing. And you kept saying is, "Wow, before when we had the chicken." My food scrap wasn't scrap, it was chicken feed. Yeah. Now I gotta throw it away. What the heck? This is terrible. And then you throw it away and it leads to stinky trash, or mm -hmm. stinky tra and then more trash, and you have to pay to get rid of your trash mm -hmm. oh, everywhere. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then we had to go find eggs. Yeah. You can't, once you have pasture raised eggs, or not even gonna be pasture raised eggs, but eggs that you raised yourself, farm mm -hmm. fresh eggs, you can't go back to a store bought egg. It's not the same. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, not the same. it's not the same. I think it's the biggest thing was if you start growing your own whatever, you eat it, you kind of tease yourself. And you're like, wow, I didn't know tomatoes were meant to be this good, or a carrot was this crispy, or an egg was, yolk was this yellow. Like, you can't go back afterwards. And you just want to go more and more and more. The first time we did a pig, which was the year Olivia was born, or the year after? Yeah. We think we did the pigs and the meat birds the same year. And we can't. We hope don't buy store-bought chickens or store-bought pork mm -hmm. since then. No, you can definitely, I mean, you definitely can tell the difference. Right. And then, I mean, I think that people, when you buy it from people that's raised like that, you, oh wow, it's really expensive, but yeah. once you really know what you're eating, you, I mean, just to go buy something from the store. Oh yeah, or you know what goes into it, so you know why the cost is Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just, it's just not as just to eat, not to enjoy it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we're not always on the same page even now, mm -hmm. but one of the things like you wanted was the outdoor kitchen. That was one of Gina's biggest things, and, I don't, and she wanted an outdoor kitchen. We wanted, I think we talked about wanting an outdoor kitchen anyway, and then when you said that you want to have that the class here, and I said, Oh, we're gonna have that outdoor kitchen because I don't, I don't, I don't want that in my house. I didn't want yeah. hmm. that. It wasn't even really messy, but I, you know, you envisioned this big mess. And yeah, you wanted the outdoor out. kitchen to keep all the mess, not of like well, harvesting, but canning, canning and cleaning and, all your vegetables. Yeah. But with that, having the class gave us, um, held us accountable to get it done and yes. the time frame to get it done in. Because we like to, would like a lot of things, but we're. We only build projects as we can afford them. Right. So having the pig harvesting class here worked out perfect. It held our feet to the fire to get the outdoor kitchen done. Because otherwise we probably would have started it and we wouldn't have finished it. We wouldn't have wanted to spend the money on it. Yeah. Not only to afford it, but to use money <laughs> to do it. Right. Oh, yeah. We're pretty frugal. Yeah. And like, so Gina wanted an outdoor kitchen. And her vision was like a pavilion. We were both had that vision and then... Well, I didn't have that vision right from the beginning. I knew what I wanted. Yeah. But so that was a compromise. Which is awesome now. But Which you is, have right. visions and, and I that's what I was going to say. You don't have to be on the same page. Uh, men and women think and can see stuff totally differently. I can, I can see something in my head and I can't explain it to Gina for the life of me. And there's nothing wrong with that. And vice versa. 
So she wanted an outdoor kitchen, and I had in my head, why, it's gonna be expensive. Good, but she just wanted a pavilion, but I didn't want just a pavilion. I wanted something, because we're in a northern climate. Antarctica, like I said, the reason we're not out doing this video in the outdoor kitchen is it was 16 below zero this morning, I think right now it's one. So it's cold. Mm -hmm. I wanted something we could use year round if we needed to. So I didn't want to just do an open pavilion outdoor kitchen. Well, I wanted that for reasoning of, I mean, cost and stuff too. Right. But Gina wanted something so like it's air. She didn't want something closed in like a house so you can't feel the breeze when you're out yeah. there and stuff, yeah. which I completely it's understand. I want to be able clean. to just take the hose and, and spray it out. Mm -hmm. But you can still do that now. We can still do that now, right? We can open up the side windows and the front windows, and we can get a good breeze going. But we can close it up and have a good tight area. We could be out there right now if we wanted to. We would have had to have a fire going, yeah. and it would have taken a couple of hours. It would have gotten warm, but I'm not feeling good, and I wasn't going out and doing that. But so that's just another example. You're not always going to be on the same page. Um, you need to try to work with your spouse or whoever. Like Gina really wanted. The outdoor kitchen. I can understand she's wanted it for a while. We both have, but you really want it to keep the mess out of the house, yeah. which is completely understandable. So that was more of, I think, a goal at first of Gina's to do this year. And then when we got the pig harvesting class, it was like, okay, we got to get it done. But yeah, I think to get on the same page with your spouse, your family, you just got to start. Somebody's got to start. You just need to start. You can't force somebody to do something. But just start small and work your way. Don't go and spend like the whole house's income on something that nobody else wants to do. But start small. Go have a garden somewhere. Go start with a couple of chickens and you take care of it. You deal with the stuff that nobody else wants to deal with. You take on all the responsibility and let them reap the benefits out of it. And then I think that's how it goes. Like the pigs, I love pigs. I don't think you'd care so much for taking care of them, but you like the food that comes from them. Right, I don't, I don't mind you having them. I like to have them, right. have them scraps, but I, I don't typically go out there. No, but if you had to now, versus the first time, I think that if I'm sick and I couldn't take care of them, I think you would be more willing to do it. Or yeah. if I had to go somewhere for a week or two for work or whatever, you'd be more willing to do it now because you know the great food that comes from it. Right. Where but before not, you did Not so much in yeah, not oh, when it's okay. 20 below zero, which I don't blame you. But mm -hmm. like the first time we had the pigs, like, then you really didn't know what the outcome was. You would have cared less to, you know what I'm saying? It would have been even harder to get you more involved. And I think we get questions a lot like, oh, when are you going to get goats? When are you going to get like a milk cow? That's a big responsibility. That's like the animals we have now, we can feed them mm -hmm. twice a day. And we don't got to spend too much more time with them other than that. So if somebody's sick or if we're busy, but a dairy cow or a dairy goat, you got to be out there once, if not twice a day, milking them, seven days a week. And for us, we would need to have a nice, I'm not going to say warm barn, because you don't want a heated barn, but you want to have something like a nice, comfortable barn that you could go into in the wintertime. I wouldn't want to be outside milking or in a mm -hmm. pallet barn right now milking a dairy goat or cow in this weather that we're getting. No, and I would be like, oh, let me do that, and it'd be fun for me to do once in a while, but it's not something I'd want to do every day. Right. But that's what's good, because you would, because that's your passion. And right. I think it's fun, and I think it's fun to have the animals, you know, for us to enjoy, and, uh, you know, when people come over to see the animals, and that's fun and stuff. Yeah, it's fun to share the food with friends that come over, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people have never had this kind of food before and they never will. If you kind of tease them that they might, this is how you're going to get them to want to get started too. It's all about the food. What's the end product? Why do you do it? And you share that with them. I think the same with your spouse and your family. Yeah. If you want to get them involved, you need to share it with them. You need to share your why. And it might take, you might have to do all the hard work yourself for a couple of years before they come on. But if you want to get started, I think that's the best way. To do it is just take it on yourself and share with them why you want to do it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, research and figure out what this entails and realize it's, if you yeah. do it in the summertime and the wintertime is going to be different and mm -hmm. the different seasons and rain. And oh, yeah. Like the first time if I ever raised pigs, if I raised them this winter, I wouldn't enjoy doing it. But I knew before we got the winter pigs what we were in for. 
you know, it's got to be coal, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. But this was the first time raising pigs, I wouldn't want to do it. I and if you're, be like, um, that's what I, I, I would be more questioning y'all. Are you sure this is okay for the pigs but, and this and that? Because I don't know. Really? Yeah. And a lot of people say that winter pigs aren't as good or they're different. Oh, right. shoot, I forgot I hadn't put it in Yep. But we are on the same page right now with animals. Like, we're happy with raising the pigs and the chickens. And we know that if we want to take on more animals, somebody needs to be at the homestead full time. If we wanted to have a dairy cow or a dairy goat, yeah. we'd have to have a barn before we did all that. So I know the video is getting long enough. I want to leave it here. Homesteading in, or starting your homestead in... Building your homestead is not a race. We might want to get there fast, because I'm that way. I like that. I want to have everything set up. But it's not a race to get set up. So it's going to take time. You don't want to burn yourself out. I wouldn't recommend going out and getting ten, five or ten different kinds of animals your first year. Start small, build it. And that being said too, like if your family or your spouse isn't on board, Start small. It might take them a few years before they get on board, but the more great food you grow, produce, and cook for them, I think the more they're going to get on board. Yeah, and it's so nice to be able to have the stuff on hand at home mm. and not have to get everything at a grocery store, yep. too. And, you know, sometimes the grocery stores don't have it. You just have it on hand at home. Oh, yeah. Like, what else we like to do? We've got a baking and just have those eggs in right now, but they're not laying as much. So it's yep. like, are you kidding me? You right. know, it's so... You almost kind of get spoiled on it. You do. Like this one, it was nice. I was making a soup and just going to the root cellar. I had the potatoes in there. We've had those potatoes for two or three weeks now. And normally if we had potatoes in our house that long, they'd be starting to grow eyes. These looked like they were fresh. I was like, yes, it's working. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you can start slow, have a place to store it, you don't need to have a great huge root cellar. We've been wanting that for 10 plus years. So just find an area in our basement of Mass, we had cold spots. This basement, we don't. So we needed one sooner than later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a progression. You got to get there. You got to think of things you want to do. You got to plan. You got to want to get there right away, but it's not going to happen. I think it's good that you don't get there right away either because you can tweak things. And you can think about more like how you want something done. Or like even like doing outbuildings or stuff like that. Like if we would have, you know, Washed and did it right when we got the property. It wouldn't be, I mean, it's awesome, but yeah. it probably wouldn't be. I mean, it'd still be probably good, but not right. We were here for two years, three years before we built the outdoor kitchen, so we knew kind of how we use the property, the lay of the land, and that was one thing we spent a lot of time before we built it. Where do we want to put the outdoor kitchen? Mm -hmm. Where is it going to be the most feasible, feasible for us? Where are we going to be able to use it the most? And for me, I was thinking. I plow the snow. I don't want to be in my way where I put my snow so we can set it in the corner at an angle and I can plow right past it. It's a short distance from the house. It's close to the animals. But we spent, I don't know if it was a week or more, but a good amount of time scratching our heads and figuring where do we want to set the outdoor kitchen up. You know, and I think you should spend time with that because that's there forever. But even if when we first moved here, they probably would have put it probably down below in that. Oh yeah, be, or this side of the cool. house, or, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when we build the barn, we don't we want to make sure we have it where we want it, because once you set something there, it's there. Yeah. yeah. I think if we build a barn, it'll be more of a, a barn, garage, slash workshop. Mm -hmm. Then we'll keep it, I think, on this side of the house, so we, we'll have to put a bathroom in the basement, so that way when we're coming in and out of the house, we can have a bathroom down here and keep the mess out of the house. Mm -hmm. That's not, we're not going to actually have that done this year. No, it's not anytime soon, but that's, you know, something we're thinking about and trying right. to plan ahead. So when we do get it, it's what we want. And we right. didn't just rush in to do it. Because then you're stuck with it, or you'd have to build something new all over again. So. And also, like, a lot of people say not to have, like, a permanent, you know, place for the, like, the pigs. Like, last year we had them over here. Mm -hmm. And this year we have a different spot, and that's awesome that it wasn't, they're not just stuck in that one spot now. They, oh, yeah. We they have a bigger area, and it's making our land more yep. usable, and so you can move them around, too. 
someone even to get mobile. Chicken coop, yep. just kind of mm -hmm. moving stuff around. It's nice not keeping that a permanent structure. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move the pigs come spring to a different location and find that out. And, and after when they move from that spot they're in, and then you see F, it's like, whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing how and, much work you know, they have to do. Not only did you do something, but they they, they work for you. and You get presents from them. Yep, and then you get food from them. Mm -hmm. They do work for you. They make their food for you, and then they leave the ground, the soil better than when they were there. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good thing. So that's what we'll end today's video. Don't be afraid to take your time. Think as our culture goes, we it's hard for delayed gratification. I think homesteading has taught at least me that a lot more. Like take your time. It's okay to take your time. Nothing the good things don't happen like that. Right, Olivia? Yeah. Right. I think it's a good thing for Olivia to be learning. It's a good thing for me to be learning. It's a good thing for Gina to be learning. And then just work with each other. We're not always going to be on the same page. We're different people. I think if we were on the same page, I'd be kind of bored. Like mm -hmm. if there was two of me always thinking the same thing, like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be a lot. <laughs> we got to have somebody to... I have to have, you have, to have someone to keep you... Even keel. <laughs> yeah. You need somebody that's not always on the same page as you. So I think it's a good thing. you got to learn to work with it. Yeah, so you would be uh, exhaust yourself, right, sir? I sure would. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at... From the Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.